And by the way, I would give up, I would give up all my silver gains and gold gains just to have everybody. If I could get everyone to get a little bit, I would give up all the potential gains I would make. Hey guys, Raf here from the Endgame Investor. I got Phil with me on the line for the monthly uh, Phil installment. He's going to tell us about some interesting things, including how he got a whole bunch of people to stack silver and why the reverse repos are not falling, maybe he thinks, and also why we're not going to descend into nuclear war, we hope. All I know is my gut says maybe. Uh, and so may you all gather strength from Phil's words of wisdom. Uh, so Phil, we were starting this talk uh, about uh, the ice pick that killed Trotsky. How did we get to that? Oh, I went to the uh, uh, International Spy Museum in D.C., and uh, they have uh, Trotsky's ice pick there. It was very, they even uh, have a little spot of blood on the handle or something, which they were proud to oh. show Trotsky's blood. <laughs> any, is there any brain matter? No, I think it's it's just some old dry blood. <laughs> That'd be. Okay. Because, like, maybe you could clone him. I mean, it is um, this is a kids friendly museum. It was, it was interesting. You went around, um, you know, they had the little activities for the kids doing um, pretending to be spies. And they had a ton of like in info dumps for the adults. So it was good for everybody. Wait, was it can you can you get like an ice pick replica at the gift shop with bloodstains? No, but I will say this. I will say one thing that's interesting. So most of the museums in D.C. are public. Uh, they're, um, you know, they're, they're run basically by the government. And but the spy museum is a private one. So one thing I've noticed is the public ones, they talk to you like you are the dumbest person on earth. Like the things that, you know, the little plaques are just written for just the stupid people. I mean, it's like treating you like you can barely read. My, my joints are all achy and I. Is this a hospital or I actually I don't even know where I am. Uh, mm -hmm. But the one in the private museums, they have like these big info dumps, like I was saying, uh, and they have a ton of activities that they would never allow in the public museums. Like the kids are like, they were had like coding, uh, you know, secret code cipher stuff that you could work with and touch. But the public museums are all like behind the glass and with stupid plex. So, whoa, I just support. thought of like five different memes I can put in here. I'm <laughs> like uh, Demolition Man and Idiocracy. <laughs> And a whole bunch of stuff. Wow, I'm gonna have fun with this one. How much do you weigh? Well, I happen to weigh for this. <laughs> and you could probably, we could probably sell like gold or silver ice, but Trotsky ice pick. Is it like a, is it like an axe? Oh, silver tipped. How big yeah, is the thing? It's like a little, it's a little ice pick that you used to, to climb up. That's now I don't know why he didn't use a gun. That, 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 I guess he wanted to maybe kill him quietly, but. It was Mexico. Know, yeah? it was it Mexico city or something? Yes. It was in Mexico. I, the guy snuck in. I just read this, so I really should know mm -hmm. it, but <laughs> I forgot already. Uh -huh. Trotsky was a bastard. So I'm glad he died. Yeah. You had a you you said you had a story. Oh, OK. Be. So, yeah. So I was going into uh, the, the the city that I live in. Um, there's uh, there's a lot of uh, Russian USSR um, asylum seekers. Uh, what, what do we call them? I don't know. Like Refugees. people who people who use the who use the, the right of return um, on the on the pretend on the pretense of a Jewish grandparent. And they use that to come here. And some of some of them it's true, some of them it's not. So there's like this big Russian community. Some of them are Jewish, some of them aren't. And uh, so I I go to these um, I go to a lot of their shops to get the. They have some kosher food because like some of it's just like packaged and it's it's kosher regular. And but they sell pork. So a lot of the a lot of the Jews don't like shopping there because you're not supposed to have pork in the city. Mm. Um, but I, but I started shopping there because they were the only ones that let me in without a mask. So like I forgive their pork in uh, imports <laughs> um, because they were real nice to me. And I was like, look, I'm, I'm not, uh, I explained to them in Hebrew and their Hebrew is okay. Like I am not a Stalin guy. I don't like communism and you're not making me put on a mask. And they're like, okay, we get it. Like, like mm -hmm. give this guy, like they don't, they didn't harass me for like two years. So it was great. Um, you find, you find allies wherever you can, man. It's a yeah. <laughs> um, 
So and and they know me as like the only religious guy with a with a, a kippa that goes into their shop, even though there's pork everywhere, because you know I, <laughs> I have I have my own priorities. And um, so I I looked up I looked up at the at the cash register. Like above it was a picture of Lenin, and I I ne- I think this was always there. I just never noticed it. And then I said to him in Hebrew, uh, uh, you know, you've got a picture of Lenin there. Why? And then and then he he looks at me. He's like. <laughs> because and then I then I looked at the I looked at the picture and there was like a target on his forehead. Um, like, oh, okay, that's kosher. That's cool. Okay, <laughs> I was like, okay, I like this guy even more now. That's great. But yeah, they they they're very fiercely anti-communist over here. Which oh, is I would imagine. Any, I mean, anyone who's gone through it is usually very anti-communist. It's the uh, it's the people who are like suffering from an abundance of luxury that are suddenly like, you know, communism's not a bad idea. Yeah. Well, that brings us to our first topic and the way to really escape communism is to take the money away from the communists, which is by by stacking real money. So, Phil, I heard that you were able to get a bunch of your neighbors to uh, pile in together to buy silver, maybe some gold. I don't know. How did you do it? What inspired you? How did you how did you how did you not what inspired you? I know what inspired you, but how did you come to the. How did you come to the the place in your head where it was like, okay, I'm going to try this and 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 I just got to do it? So after it was actually right after our last conversation, <clears throat> I uh, I was sitting there thinking, and I was like, if it's just if it's just me, you, and Jeff Bezos, we're all doomed, right? We have to we have to get out beyond our channel. Uh, it, you know, in your channel and my channel, people that are already there are already in that mindset. They're already thinking. At least they're thinking. Maybe you know, maybe that's what I want to do, but. I was thinking there must be people who maybe they don't know that what to do, but they're they're already scared about the dollar. Maybe they're scared about the dollar. Maybe they're scared about their investments. So I'm just going to, and I'm gonna I'm gonna be very vague here to respect everyone's personal privacy. Mm-hmm. I just sent out an email uh, and and just chatting with people around. I just I basically just sent out an email to everyone I thought might possibly be interested, and I I'm, I'm involved with some other groups that are not uh, money related or whatever. So I just sent out a blaster. I said, "Hey, I'm starting this group, and it's just in my local area. It's, it, I didn't, I didn't email at people in Texas. I didn't email people far away. I just emailed in my local area. I said, um, you know, if you want to discuss this, I will. I'm going to start a signal channel, and we can discuss um, monetary theory and maybe, you know, what you want to do with your retirement savings if you're worried about it. And I said, hey, if, if you're not, you know, ignore this email. No big deal." Uh, and we're just having a friendly chat. I, I I didn't say I'm like pumping silver. I'm trying to sell something or the world's going to end. I just said, if you are worried about it, come talk to me. Or right, we'll, we'll talk we'll talk in this group together as a group and we can debate it, uh, you know, debate the merits of whatever. And uh, a lot of people joined. A lot of people joined. And uh, we were, and we're having a great we're having a great discussion. It's only open to people around. Like I said, I, I wanted to keep it just my neighbors who know each other. I mean, not, not my physical neighbors. <clears throat> it's people in my neighborhood, in my my larger county, I would say. We're gonna find out real quick who's the real capoeira maestri in this neighborhood. Uh, people who are interested, and uh, you know, I just kept it local, and everybody, most people already know each other at least a little bit, and uh, we just start chatting, and uh, you know, I I talk about. What I talk about with you here, you know, inflation, deflation, the risks of the dollar, you know, what what things will look like. And uh, what I've noticed is that a lot of people are at least the people that I was talking to are. They're scared. They don't know which way to go. And they're worried about things like cashing in their 401k to buy a bunch of bullion, for example. Um, they're worried about uh, the taxes on that. They're worried about, you know, a lot of, th- you know, there's just, it's a lot of common questions, common sense questions. Um, where do we, do they vault it? Do they, what do they do with their IRAs? Do they want to vault it abroad? Do they want to vault it close to home? So that's what I'm making. If you, anyone's watching my channel, my, my most recent videos are like, well, this is what you do. This is what you can think about doing. I don't tell anybody what to do. This is what you can think about doing. These are some options you can think about. And these are some concepts to think about, and then they go from there. And what I'm what I'm happy to say I, now, I don't. People have thrown numbers at me, and I'm, I'm I don't ask questions. I'm not trying to invade anyone's privacy. And frankly, I don't want to know. <laughs> like this is your view, your personal thing. I'm giving you the the concepts to think about, and what you do with that is up to you. Mm-hmm. But people have 
thrown numbers at me and I'm happy to say I've, millions of dollars have been turned into gold near me. <laughs> wow. Gold and silver or just silver? Yes. Like gold and silver. Gold and silver. Yeah. Wow. Millions. Uh, it, based on what, based, based on what people have told me, I don't know for sure, but they've come to me and said, I have X amount of dollars. I want to turn it into gold. What do I do? What are my options? And then, you know, I give them and, uh, and I, you know, give them the minor stocks, give them, you know, what, these are the different strategies you can follow. And so I, I, if they have done what they said they would were going to do, then then millions and millions of dollars has been converted over. Wow. Okay. So you know that's <clears throat> that's probably the practically the best thing that we can do to hasten this, to yes. hasten the end. Um, because I would I on my on my channel, um, if you check this channel, if you check the most popular videos, and I don't I don't know if this is an indication that we're getting close or whatever, or it's just a or it's just a freak accident. I put up this um, this meme video like two years ago in 2021 um, from Three O'clock High. It's one of my favorite movies. Uh, and there's this uh, there's this fight scene at the end where these these two kids, this bully is fighting this other kid, and he has a he has brass knuckles and like he's about to punch him out. And then his friends come and and one of his friends come and tackles the guy, and then the brass knuckles fall over. And then he puts the brass knuckles on, gives the guy one big punch, and then he he conquers the bully. So I put I put a meme on this uh, on this video um, that the the bully's like the Federal Reserve, and the, he puts the brass knuckles on with gold, and he punches him out. It's it's pretty entertaining. And it got pretty much, it got no views for like two years. And then all of a sudden it's just like, it's past half a million and it's getting like five, 6,000 views a day. Um, and I, I watch it like once every few weeks, just to check, a, check on what the views are and how people are, are responding to it. And I, I feel myself getting more and more inspired by this thing. And I wonder if people are starting to figure it out. Cause I was explaining the meme to my son you know, cause we were watching it at, we, I passed the half a million marks. I'm like, here, before I look at this and, uh, and he's like, oh yeah, I understand. <laughs> he's like, yeah, we have to buy the, we have to buy the gold because, um, that's the way to empty their, that's the way to empty their coffers to actually buy the gold and silver. Uh, yes. there's, there's no other, there's no other way to, to finish this. Cause in the end, that's, what's going to happen when the price go, when the price keeps going up and up and up and we might be on the verge of that. I don't know. Um, yeah, people are scared. They just don't know what to do. And it you know, I, I, I didn't know what, I mean, it, it's amazing to say it, but you know, I got a graduate degree in economics and lived another 20 years before I understood what money was, you know, and mm -hmm. it was your, your channel that, that, that explained that. And it's just, it, it's so, the derivatives are so all consuming that even people who have like studied this stuff don't quite get it. So, you know, normal person, they can feel, they can feel something's wrong, but they don't necessarily know which way to go. So, and you and me, like I said, talking on our channels is only getting a small, uh, small group. We're not going to be able to save the world with just our channels. So we have to have to, sp the people watching, I'm encouraging maybe to start your own local groups with people who are interested in it. Like if, if somebody's stuck in the matrix, like I, I have family members that are just, they think I'm insane. They're, they're not interested. So they're, you're not going to change their mind, but just approach people that you care about and say, Hey, this is something, you know, I'd like to maybe talk about with you. What do you think about this? And see if you can get a group started. See if you can get uh, these things going. And we can talk. You know, we we had plenty of debate. You know, I, I there was a guy that joined the group, and he was. Um, it's funny. I, I he was actually very. He's politically extremely conservative, and he's a very like you know I you know he his bed sheets are probably the Gadsden flag. You know, like he's very <laughs> like liberty constitutional minded. But he was saying uh, work is money. And I was like, work is money. He's like, yeah, when you do work, you provide value. And I'm like. That's literally Marxist. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to go down that path. <laughs> yeah, but it's 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 it's. I mean, it's amazing how that can seep in. Like, just the confusion, the chaos, the misunderstanding of what money is can lead. I mean, people that would never think uh, that they would be Marxist saying Marxist things, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I, I, <clears throat> on that on that topic, um, look, if any of you are watching this. And you have uh, you have 
this understanding that gold and silver are money. It doesn't have to be a perfect intellectual understanding, right? It just has to be a visceral understanding, which you can have, which if you're holding the coin in your hand, if you hold a gold coin in your hand and you feel that it's heavy and it's weighing you down, like even if gold goes down 10, 20, 30, 40, 50%, okay, that can happen. It, it happened from 1980 into to 2000, went down more than that. Even if it does, like it's not going to make you think that, oh, nobody cares about this thing anymore. It, it, there's, there's, there's this understanding that this is grounding you. It's like the inverse of a spiritual experience. There's some people like they have a near-death experience or they suddenly find God or whatever belief system they have, or they understand for whatever reason that, okay, we, we were created and whoever created us is watching. Okay. What, whatever make that happen in your head, it's a spiritual experience for them and you can't convince them otherwise once they see it. So that's the that's sort of the opposite. But once you put once you put a gold coin in somebody's hand, they understand that this thing is money. And it's not the same with Bitcoin. In Bitcoin, what causes the excitement is that it keeps going up and up and up. And so you calculate, you multiply one times 65,000, then you imagine how much stuff you can get. And that's what's comforting you. It's all fantasy. It's not in yeah. your there's nothing that you're holding. Right. And then what what's really what really can drive people crazy is like uh, ask them like, where are your savings? And they'll say, oh, 401k, stocks, bonds, this or that, or whatever it is, a number that they get in the mail, you know, every month to see what their balance of dollars is. But like, where is it? Where are you? Where are they? Where is where are the dollars that you suppose? What where are they? And they can't answer the question. And then once they can't answer the question, they get really nervous. Like, where where are my savings? Like, how do I, how do I get them? Like, what are they? And they don't know. And so um, my point is like, there is a basic human understanding that this stuff is money. Even if you don't understand it intellectually, you will understand it physically when you're holding the thing in your hand. And so it will calm you down to a certain degree. And you'll understand that when the end game happens, this, we're going to go back to this. I don't know exactly what it's going to be worth. I don't know what it's going to buy, but this is what we're going back to. And that will calm people down if they have 10% cold, even if they're Bitcoin crazy and they and they want to have all they want to have like 90% bitcoin but they want 10% gold just in case you know just say like you know maybe something's going to happen i don't you know you don't get into the argument or anything but like even uh, even the bitcoin people they're easy targets because they do want some gold and silver and even that's enough let them gamble with the rest of it what do i care <laughs> there you go and then they'll learn the lesson and they won't be um they won't be bereft because they had they had the 10% of the gold in yeah. Or you could be Michael Saylor and be banging on the street at the end of this one. <laughs> I'm guessing maybe maybe six, seven thousand people are gonna be watching this. So if even one out of ten of you can talk to a few neighbors just to get them to stack, and you can make money off of this. You can affiliate, you can uh, uh like you know, you can partner with companies and get your neighbors to to buy and then credit you with uh gold and silver, like you can get a discount. These these companies they want you to work with them. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a good side hustle. It can give you, even if you want to do it a one-time thing, you can make a few hundred bucks, maybe a, thousand, a few thousand bucks on just talking to people and getting them to stack and empty out the government money stocks. That's what yeah. we want. Now, um, I, I personally, I mean, per, this is my personal choice. I, I have stayed away from that just because I don't, I don't want people to think that I'm trying to make a buck off of them. So. <laughs> okay. That's also legitimate. I'm not saying you don't have to do that, but. Yeah, yeah of course. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What I ask, I mean, on my channel, I ask for a don I ask for a cup of coffee donation if you are if you are so inclined, or buy some merch that I'm selling, and then you then you get a cool mug too. So it's you know, but I don't want that. I I draw a distinct line between but like there's a reason I'm not opening up a bullion shop. Like I'm not trying to get the only bullion will save you. And by the way, I'm selling it right here. You know, Miles Franklin, precious metals. Today's specials are one ounce gold Krugerrands. Only $59 over spot. Call 855-GAME-END or email endgameinvestor at milesfranklin.com. Also this week being offered are one ounce silver 2023 Britannias, a 50 coin minimum while supplies last, only $3.15 over spot. Once again, call 855-GAME-END or email endgameinvestor at milesfranklin.com and one of our guys will get in touch with you. <laughs> right. So yeah, I don't know. That's... That's legitimate. I, I get that. Um, yeah. And, uh, oh. you know, <laughs> if you just want to destroy their, their, uh, the monetary system, then, you know, just do it without commission. Yeah. Right? That's... It'll be better. <laughs> but I also, I also have another source of income. Like if, if I didn't have another source of income, maybe I would 
consider doing that because, you know, it, I, I don't think it's dishonest. I think it's perfectly honest to say, hey, I'm selling what's going to save you in the end game. No problem. But have some now. You know, get some now. But, you know, because I have another source of income, I don't really need to do that. So I, I can be a neutral voice and say, hey, this is my this is what I think is going to happen. And I don't have a financial stake and I don't have an incentive to get you invested in what I'm doing. Right. Mm -hmm. So. But I still think it's the best idea. So and what I'm saying for the for the viewers, like just just start something like this, because I'm sure anybody's listening cares. They they definitely would care and want people around them, even if they can't get their family, even if they can't get their friends, the ones they really, truly care about. If they can get, you know, the, the you know, the neighbor a few houses down, you know, then then then, you know, it's a little more decentralized. It's a little more uh, spread out. Like I said before, if it's you, me and Jeff Bezos, we are doomed. <laughs> like, this is going to be really bad. So the, the more, you know, just get people down. And you know what? Now you're friends with your neighbor down the street and you guys can divvy up the neighborhood as you're buying houses. You say, I'll take, uh, I'll take this half of the neighborhood. You take that half. Yeah. Well, really, really, <laughs> so really, if you, if you map out what we're trying to do, we're trying to spread it out. Like we're not create, we're not mining. We're not creating gold and silver. We're not increasing the supply. What we're trying to do is spread it out to a community. <laughs> we are the true communists. I mean, you know, I don't want to say that. That doesn't even sound good. But like, we we we're, we're not. We're trying to diffuse the supplies from concentrated piles to as many people as possible. And uh, once you have everybody have it, then you have the the um, yeah. the exchange rate. I wouldn't even call it a price. We want to reveal the true exchange rate. Yeah. And by the way, I would give up, I would give up all my silver gains and gold gains just to have everybody. If I could get everyone to get a little bit, I would give up all the potential gains I would make. Um, yeah, but it's, it's you know, it's but to... you don't have to worry about and and don't worry about that. Like, don't don't think, oh, I need to keep this a secret. There's so many people that are not ready. So just getting everyone you can prevents the zombie apocalypse, but you'll still make you'll still make unbelievable gains. So yeah. So the the difference I'd say between let's say 2007 and now is that in 2007, very few, only the hardcore libertarians that understood the theory and like they read Rothbard and maybe a few other, you know, old fashioned monetary people, they understood that there was something wrong. Um, other people were annoyed by inflation, but they didn't really think about it so much. And then 2008, there was like this big hiccup and then people got scared, but then things got back to normal for a few years and gold went up. But like, Nobody was freaking out. Um, but now, now since 2020, I think people get there's something seriously wrong. And yeah, a lot of people. No, ma no matter who you talk to, unless you're talking to like this ideological deep blue Biden, whatever. I don't even know what to call them, but like so somebody who's clearly not there anymore. He's, he's gone. But most people, I'd say 90% know that there's something seriously wrong and a gold coin would comfort them. That's all you need. Like yeah. you, know, you don't, you don't need a community of, of monetary theoreticians. You just need a community of scared people that could use a gold coin to help them sleep better at night. That's it. Well, what I, what I tell people, I don't care. Like there's, cause there's a lot of people out there with different competing ideas. So I said, I don't, I don't care if you're, I don't care if you're stacking silver because you want to fend off flesh eating space aliens. As long as you're doing it, like it's fine. <laughs> the reasoning behind it's irrelevant. <laughs> Right, right. Oh, and that 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 reminds me, I'm going to be uh, recording a class today about how um, how God Himself insists on a silver standard. It's in it's in Exodus chapter thirty something. I don't know the chapter verses very well because that's uh, it's not a Jewish system, but uh, it's in Parshas Kitisa at the beginning uh, with half a shekel of silver. And um, and uh, you know I'll I'll go into it on the Patreon. But uh, if you're interested in that, sign up to the Patreon and become a founding member of the Substack. And Phil, I'll send you a free copy. Oh, awesome! Awesome! Yeah. <laughs> um, and you can you, when you get the silver, you can bury it in the in 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 a uh, dirty man safe. Uh, use the code in game investor checkout. No, no, not in game in game ten, man. In game ten. In game ten. I'm sorry. Are you trying to ruin <laughs> my business? Um, use the code Phil Low. Uh... Hello, investor. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Uh, what was the set? We were talking. We were going to talk about. Um, sorry. What was oh, why the, the RRP drain is slowed? So I was going to say we right. were talking. I think the last time we talked, or maybe two months ago, we were calling. I was think I was calling February. You were saying March, and then the RRP, you know, the trajectory, kind of flattened out 
And so now uh, you and I are revealed to be crackpots and grifters. This whole thing was fake. And um, <laughs> money's good, dollars going to stay money forever. And we were wrong. And we should just admit it and uh, and go home. So <laughs> All right. I guess the question is why the RRPs uh, flattened out and what is going on. And that's more, I guess I'm going to ask you that question. I have a thought. Okay. But I'll, I'll give you my thought and then you give me your thought. Okay. Okay. So my thought is that the RRPs, they pay 5.3%. And uh, basically uh, for, for, for newcomers or uh, people who don't know what we're talking about, um, our theory is that the RRPs are basically the extra money that was printed in 2021 and couldn't fit in the banks so that it's, it's back at the Fed now because the banks couldn't house it. And now it's flowing back into the banks um, and the, it's, it's kind of cushioning the money supply. But there's, uh, I think there's $441 billion left as of uh, March 1st. So uh, what, what flows into the RRPs in that, that it means somebody has to pay them more than 5.3% on a short-term basis uh, with no duration risk. That's going to be treasury bills. And right now there are more treasury bills being redeemed than there are treasury bills being issued. And the treasury is moving the money raising activity from short-term bills to longer term notes. Uh, so money markets can't buy long-term notes because uh, duration risk. So they, they, they can't do that even statutorily. I don't think they can do that. So um, there's there's not enough bills to buy, and the some of the money that was going into bills is now being redeemed, and they don't have enough bills to put it back in. So it stopped the 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 flow down, except it hasn't stopped it. It's slowly moving down, even even so. That's my theory. Ah, so you think it's treasury market sales were slowing? That I so what I noticed was that M two actually ticked up. So I thought just credit generation was uh, increasing. So there's no need to drain the, you know, the, 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 the RRPs are acting like a money shed, a dollar shed. So when that, when it comes time to pay the loans, uh, you just go out to the shed and get some dollars and pay it off to those. Right. So I'm thinking with credit generation increasing the, the, the pressure on the banks to uh, come up with their loans or the, you know, their loan payments is, is lessened. So it's and it's people buying, you know, I, at least for what I thought, what I think it is, is people buying, you know, Balenciaga shirts on uh, on layaway. <laughs> I think I told you in chat, you know, I I did a channel and I uh, I did an episode on my channel where I talked about uh, people buying uh, Balenciaga shirts, and I clicked on a shirt for two thousand dollars, two thousand dollars for the shirt, Rafi, and uh, I clicked on it, and it looks like your shirt. I mean, it doesn't look. I think it's purple, but it looks kind of like your shirt. So I, uh, I clicked sure on it. was made by first... a slave in Kuala Lumpur, probably. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, so was that one. So there's no difference. Just okay. the third shift, right? The um, I clicked on it. And then the first thing that happened was it offered me installment plans. It was like, would you like to buy this shirt over you know a 12-month period? And I'm like, oh, that's how they do it. Or 10 oh, months. Oh, so you're saying that the and reverse you buy that on repo. Credit. So you're saying the reverse repo came uh, and, and funded that company who's offering to pay pay it out in tashlimim in um in installments and then well, they they take I, think the the, I don't I don't think people need to drain the reverse repo because just because people are because of the high um the very high interest desperate borrowing people are doing is actually bumping up credit a little bit mm -hmm. so that they don't need to drain the reverse repo I, I, wait I don't understand that explain well credit because credit's that. expanding right so credit right. the 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 I borrow $2,000 from my credit card company at 20% interest to pay this, to buy the shirt. Now the, the credit, so the credit card has the deposit. The money's they, have been created. Pay, they, they have to pay Balenciaga or whatever. Reason. They pay Balenciaga. Okay. Now Balenciaga has them. See, it gets credit, you know, the, the loans and the, uh, the liabilities right. and the assets get confusing, but Balenciaga now has the $2,000. Mm -hmm. They can go spend it, so that the the money generation is in the money is actually increased. So okay. they don't need to go to the they don't need to go back behind the woodshed to get their their pile of dollars that they stash there. Okay. So once once that stop, like once you know once the guy stops making his payment, he's going to make two payments on that Balenciaga shirt, and he's going to say, you know what, this shirt it, it ripped in the laundry. Oh, I don't I'm not going to pay anymore. Uh, so once that happens, then they, he defaults, the credit card defaults on Balenciaga and he, you know, then, then they, the, the, the credit generation stops. And then, then we're going to have to go back to the woodshed to get the money out, the dollars okay. out. Okay. Look, wh however, however it happens, it's going to drain out. 
It's inevitable. The new world is inevitable. It's what? Ineb inevitable. One more time? Inevitable! Things are inevitably going to change! I don't know how much longer credit can expand, um, bank credit can expand here. Bank credit is not exactly money supply, but it's very close to it. Um, well, people are doing, you've, you've done, you've done episodes on this. People are doom spending now. Yeah. Yeah, they are. Uh, lamb tote, lamb skin tote, another two, what, 2,500 lamb skin tote bag. When the gold, the little gold chain is going to be the most valuable thing on that tote bag. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're doom spending now. I think they're even doom spending here. Um, I'm getting, I'm getting a lot of, uh, I'm getting a lot of indication that people are not caring anymore what they're spending. Um, it, you know, a war atmosphere kind of contributes to that because yeah. there's, there's a lot of, I mean, this is hard to say, but there's a lot of families here that don't have their men at home because everyone's at war, um, guarding the border, waiting for an invasion to start, um, down in Gaza fighting, whatever, patrolling Judea and Samaria. I mean, every, every, all the, all the men are in, uh, are in reserve duty and they're not getting an income except, you know, whatever check from the state. So that just circles back in and, and adds to inflation, it, their definition of inflation, just like, and, uh, and at the same time we have um, all these Northern towns evacuated and, and, uh, you know, farmland being fat, lying fallow and not being harvested and food rotting. So it's getting pretty bad here. Um, I'm, I'm insulated from a lot of it. Uh, but, uh, there's, there's doom spending here because not because, oh, they're like, oh, I don't care. I'm just going to buy this Balenciaga shirt. They're like, I'm going to buy food for my kids and I'm going to go into debt because I don't want them to die. <laughs> that's, now the debt, uh, that's the thing. If somebody's drowning in debt and watching this, what I would say is don't worry. Like there, it is going to be a debt jubilee. Um, so there's, you know, don't let the debt oppress you. I guess I would say I wouldn't necessarily, um, I wouldn't necessarily increase the debt unnecessarily. Just oh, I'll just go buy all the Balenciaga shirts I want and then default on them. But uh, mm -hmm. uh, I wouldn't. At the end of this, you will be debt free. So <laughs> don't don't get don't get too overburdened by them because it seems it appeal it, it it would certainly seem daunting. I would imagine you know you have a you've got a car you know back in the good old days you bought a car that you now can't make the payments on. You got a house you can't make the payments on. Um, you know things start to get a little overwhelming. But don't, you might lose the car, you might lose the house, but the debt will, will go away. Yeah, it will. I mean, the debt, the debt is really the bank's problem now. It's yeah. the, the banks that are, that are, um, that are failing. And this, this actually, I noted, before we go into our third topic, I, I discovered this, that, um, that New York Community Bank Corp, right? The latest uh, casualty in the bank saga. So they actually, they took a $2.4 billion goodwill impairment charge. And, and you'd think that, oh, it must be something from, you know, recently, but it, it wasn't. It was, it was something actually from 2000 and from before 2008, they went for whatever, I don't like, all I have is the lawyer language from the updated annual report that was quoted by Reuters or Yahoo or something. And I, I don't know what actually happened or what they're calculating, but they went back into their into their statements from 2007 and they said oh look we lost 2.4 billion dollars here and I'm like like it, but even though i don't know what happened i do know that 2008 was never solved we just piled on top of it <laughs> so so when, whenever the end game hits that's really it's going to tell you that all the financial problems not just from 2020 not just from 2008 from every recession that's ever happened since 1933, basically, since the revaluing of the dollar to to $35 an ounce, or maybe you could say to 1973 to from 4222 or whatever it is, it's all going to come out, which is exactly what happened. If you, if you read, um, what's that, what's that book? Uh, when money dies. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. So when money dies, there's like the one or two chapters after diaper inflation ends of of all of the creepy crawlies and the disgusting mess that's unveiled like who who lost all the money who made all the money um and uh that's that's gonna happen whenever this is over except on a global scale so um we're getting we're getting close uh gold gold is up you know 2090 now 
Yeah, so that was that was that was crazy. Yeah, it, it, I swear every time you go, you every time you turn off your phone for Shabbat, something something like massive happens. <laughs> yeah, my my <laughs> wife is like, 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 probably get this news. Yeah, <laughs> I guarantee the end game the end game is going to start on Shabbat. You're going to turn off your phone. You're going to go eat dinner, and then like <laughs> just craziness is going to happen. Yeah, I'll turn on my phone on Saturday night, and uh... and then it's not going to work. <laughs> then you'll know it's uh, then you know it's started. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, this weekend, I was like, you know, what? I, I I come back from shul, I come back from synagogue, um, on Saturday evening, and then we do have Della, and uh, then I was like, you know, I don't want, I don't even want to turn on my phone. I don't want to know what's happening with the stupid war. I don't know, what's, I don't want to know what's happening in Ukraine. I don't want my phone to ding and tell me everything that happened in the war. I don't want to know. So I just, I didn't turn it on until like Sunday morning. <laughs> So. that's a good idea. I actually, I'm, I'm pondering going electronics free for a day. I'm liking that idea more and more um yeah it's uh it gives your brain a rest from the insanity of the world <laughs> a little bit all right we had a final speaking of the insanity of the world we had our final topic was why the inflation engine isn't pushing us towards nuclear war or armageddon and so my logical thought on this because i know people were worried about it people are certainly worried about it and it, i think it's rational to be somewhat worried about it i don't think that's the likely outcome because if you take if you take any what it, to take, you know name your conspiracy theory that the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers run everything and we're going to a CBDC um, or you know R one where it's a you know where it's a Ponzi scheme where they don't really have control over the system whichever one or even if it's a you know it's a physical uh, conscious demon that's running the monetary system to go for the, it's the it's the flesh eating space aliens right <clears throat> in all of these ones in all of these possible theories of what's going on and where, where this is going uh, to enjoy for the Rockefellers to enjoy their own ownership of the world and us all being enslaved to them and just, you know, worshiping them as uh, as living gods. Uh, they, they there has to be a world for them to enjoy. Right? Mm -hmm. There has to be a world of slaves to worship at their feet. Uh, and even in the decentralized one that, that you and I think where it's a pon you know, the feds in a Ponzi scheme, they can't get out of it. Um, they there's no force that's telling Lindsey Graham to go tell Biden to push the button. There's no, you know, nobody, nobody is pushing towards nuclear war. In fact, they're just, they want, an, they want a forever war in Ukraine to keep the debt spending. They need, it's, it's Julian Assange said this, the point is never to win a war. The point is to stay in a forever war. So the military industrial complex gets paid. But if there's a nuclear war, the military industrial complex is over. They can't get paid anymore. So the military industrial complex wants forever, you know they want wars far away that last forever. That's that's literally what the the the, the system wants. Uh, but now, could could someone make a miscalculation somewhere along the line? Absolutely. Uh, I but I I think it's extremely unlikely because there, unless somebody actually has a death wish, which does happen, there are people who you know their psychology wants them to 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 kill themselves and lots of other people. You know, there's um, there was a airplane I think flying to Germany. And the pilot, the pilot went to go pee, and then the co-pilot just, you know, and took took the whole whole crowd with him. Now, apparently, he was yeah. manic depressive. And wait, I guess when, when was this? I want to say about five years ago, maybe ten years ago. Okay, wow. Yeah, yeah. He went to go. He just went to go pee, and then the co-pilot just, you know, took the plane right into the ground. Uh, We're gonna have mandated catheters for all pilots now. Yeah. Well, there there actually is a rule. There was there is a rule that the the flight attendant is supposed to come in at that time, but they didn't they didn't follow that that procedure. I think he, you know, who thinks about this? <laughs> mm. Who thinks the co pilot is going to do that? But um, anyway, so if somebody with that mentality is close to a button, like you know, maybe Biden's like, oh, Hunter's going to go to jail. Um, you know, I'm on the way out. You know, hell with it. But will his handler? Would his handlers let him do that? No, there must be somebody rational, um, even if they're even if they're the worst, most corrupt, most horrible person in the world, which is you know a lot of people in high levels of government are. Yeah. They still want to live, you know. So I think that force will prevent this from the end game from spinning to anything more than a uh, financial collapse. Right. There is. Um... I agree with what you're saying here. I don't think that anybody um, not facing annihilation wants nuclear war. Um, but uh, I can think, I can think of a rational scenario where there will be nuclear war. Um, and 
uh, you know, let, let me poke you here. Let me prod you and see what you say to this, because this does worry me. And my 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 escape route for this scenario is God. And I know that doesn't that that's like what do you say? That's like a that's like an injection button. Like I'm not on this plane anymore and I just say God and like it's not a thing. OK, I get, fine. I get that. Um, but that's how I sleep. But um, but there are there are many countries are uh, many people in this world that don't want me here and yeah. they will kill all of us if they could and if iran gets involved in some kind of a war uh and brings russia in and israel is threatened with annihilation um and if that happens they like the enemies here would come in and 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 massacre every jew in this country without a you know without blinking they do it they they would do it um, and so Israel would respond with a nuclear strike. They would, um, because I would. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I know, I know, I understand how Jews think. Um, yeah. We're under constant threat of annihilation, and we would do that. I, um, I don't I want think, to, <laughs> but I'm ready to. I, it could spin out of control. I think a lot of the Arab leaders don't actually care that deeply about the Palestinian conflict, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. Uh, they have to pretend because their own countries are poorly managed, poorly run, corrupt. And so they give their people, hey, look at the Jews over there doing that stuff. So um, like, do the mullahs in Iran really care? I mean, maybe spiritually they, you know, they care on an intellectual level, but are they really willing to go to that end? Because they know they know Israel has the nukes. So my guess is it will, it's just a guess. My guess is it will, they'll pull short. It's like, you know, you're running up to a guy and you're going to punch him, but you, you know, you stop about three feet away and just yell at him. Yeah. Um, so I'm not like, I say this like emotionally and convincingly, but I don't think it's going to happen. I, re I really, I really don't think it's going to happen. Um, that's it's, it's not, but it, it, it plausibly could happen. Um, but anything other than that, um, I, d I don't think that the new, the military industrial complex wants nuclear war. Um, Israel doesn't want it either, and the Arabs don't want it either. But yeah, you have no, enough no, true no. believers in this. In this, uh, you have enough true believer believers in this area of the world that something, an accident, could happen. Uh, yeah, is are there are death cults that that could try and try and force that? Yes. Yeah. Um, but if if it does, and we were talking about this before we started recording, if it does, it's not really going to affect any of us because we're not even going to notice. Yeah. We won't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, well on that cheery note now <laughs> no look look we'll, we'll be fine this will be diffused somehow and uh <laughs> i don't know how but uh i never do and uh something something will happen to uh to lighten the load yeah do you think i mean do you think the state's these states will exist in their form. I, I'm starting to think like we're just going to like America might break down into 50 or 100 small countries. Same with uh, Europe, you know. OK, I mean, so I, I, this is an interesting question. So uh, I don't know, but here's here's a plausible scenario, I think. Right. You have states in the in the U.S. that are that have pretty good finances, relatively good finances, and they even have. Uh, gold and silver stocks in some kind of centralized location for the state government. Uh, I don't think they're that big, but and you have states with more and less silver stackers, and you have states with truly insane people, and you have states with with fewer insane people. So what I think was going to happen, I'm not even saying I think is this is I think is plausible that the the deep blue states where people have lost their minds, I think they're going to completely disintegrate, right? And you're going to have these like riots and in Chicago, in LA, in New York City, and all these other places that you don't want to be near. And I think Long Island is going to be completely break down. But then you go to states like, say, Nebraska, Wyoming, Idaho, uh, maybe Texas, maybe Texas, maybe Texas will break up, but not in, you know, a thousand pieces, maybe like four or five. Um, Alaska, those types of places, I think they will stay strong and, um, and relatively sane and break up a little bit less. Or, or their breakup will be more functional and less dysfunctional. Uh, and then you could have, 
like I, I don't I don't think California is viable anymore. I think they've just completely lost it. Yeah. Same with Oregon and, and Washington. These places are going down. New York. Um, Florida is a Florida is a, a difficult case because there, there are pockets of Florida that are completely nuts. And there are, and there are places in Florida that they've got it. They they figured it out more or less. So I don't know what's going to happen with Florida. But um, is the United States going to survive as one political entity? I sincerely doubt that. Yeah. Yeah. Same with. I mean, I, I just to let every word. We're not going into a Chinese uh, dystopia either. I mean, they're going to collapse too. Probably worse. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look, uh, it, China. China benefits from American inflation. So they're part of one system. When you have a when you have a trade surplus like China has, it's because of the trade deficit of the United States. So they're they're playing the same game. So when when the trade deficit of the United States stops, the trade surplus of the of China stops, and then all of the the paper that they've been stacking in this mercantilist nightmare that they've been playing that 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 all becomes worthless. <laughs> so yeah. what what are they going to do? China's broken up like that. How many times? Like. 20, 30 times in the past 3,000 years. Yeah, so that's, that's its history is breaking, breaking up and then recoalescing into a corrupt authoritarian regimes. Yeah, so what's it? Oh, I mean, hopefully we still stay decentralized and free. I mean, that's that was the dream. So, yeah. So one video that I could recommend is um Bill. I think his name is Bill Wurtz, W-U-R-T-Z on, on YouTube. I don't know if you've seen any of his stuff, but I, I highly recommend him. Bill Wurtz. He's like, he narrates as if he's like, severely high uh and he 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 writes this like cartoonish version of world history so that that will go into the that goes into part of it into china like uh coalescing and disintegrating over and over and over again um it's it's good to watch if you're under the influence of uh certain substances or not um he has one about the history of japan too and it's pretty good so uh bill wertz uh i'll put a link in the description below how about that and uh it's entertaining it's good yeah. You know, Michael Malice has a great, uh, great quote. And he said, the um, America was designed, the founders envisioned America to be the smallest government possible. And instead, we have the largest government ever in the history of the world. <laughs> like somehow that got morphed into this giant, giant uh, Goliath. There's no there's no stopping that. And and you know to close this off, let's say look, the way the way that I read the Torah, the way that I read the Bible, is um, I'm not I'm not a fundamentalist in the sense where I where I believe that everything that happened in it happened literally as it says. I don't really care that yeah. much, um, but I do believe it is a, is a divine source and that it's a message to us from above. Uh, so you read this, so you read the story of the Tower of Babel. And you're like, oh, isn't that cute? They wanted to build a nice tower and then come together and then bang, bang, bang. And like it's a very short story, but like the point is, this is always gonna happen. Always. Like people are gonna try to build towers and become as powerful as possible and concentrate power into one or two different focal points, and then everything's gonna come down. Like, like, why why is the tower why is the story of the tower after the story of the destruction of the flood? Well, mm -hmm. Okay, so everything is destroyed, and then God promises he's never going to do that again. So what's he going to do instead? He's going to make it literally impossible for power to concentrate to such a point where you have a situation where the world has to be destroyed again. He'll make sure that everything falls over before everyone deserves to die. <laughs> you know? <laughs> not going to happen again. That's the point, that we don't have to worry about this anymore, because God promised not to. It doesn't mean like he's a... We're not saying that he's like a conscious... I know he I'm he is a conscious thing according to me, but the point isn't that there's this guy in in the sky that pushes a button every time things get too close. The laws of nature make it impossible for people to gather enough power into their hands to merit the destruction of the entire planet. It's not going to happen. Is there anything that can be done when we're rebuilding after the uh, the end game? Is there anything to be done to slow or stop it in the future? Because the found, I mean, the founders wrote what we would think would be a document that would prevent it, but it didn't. <laughs> um, well, you know, I could say the same thing from my perspective. God, God had Moses write, write a document that would prevent it, and it didn't either. <laughs> so well, I, guess, I guess writing things down is not the solution. Uh, is there? No, no, it's not nothing. It's not nothing. It's not the con it's not that the Constitution is worthless because we say, oh, like you know, as we were as we were chatting beforehand, we're talking about concealed carry laws and this and that, and, and you're not allowed to like have a loaded gun in your on your side 
uh, in Maryland. So you got to put the ammunition in back and separate it. I was like, isn't that unconstitutional? Like, oh, who cares about the constitution anymore? But people do care about it because we still cite it. And it's yes. still it's still a document that people understand as part of their history. You know, most of the Torah is not applicable right now, uh, but we still study it. And, and you know, my culture goes back to that. Your culture goes back to the Constitution. It's the same basic idea um, that so writing down these documents, there is a purpose to them. We still have the Magna Carta. It's still part of Western history. So uh, so I don't know, maybe at some point we have enough written documents and we're like, OK, we're not going to do this again. Um that it just doesn't happen again. But then we're, we're talking about like the change of human nature to, you know, God circumcising our hearts and making us better people or different or, or different human nature, which I can't really conceive of. I don't know what that means. Yeah. Uh, so uh, hopefully one day he will. But uh, right now we just have to hang on to our written and oral traditions, whatever they are, understand what good is and it's balance and get back into balance before, uh, where the tower collapses again because it's going to collapse and then we got to be at the bottom picking up the pieces. All right. Well, that's a good way to end. <laughs> All right. Keep stacking. Get your neighbors. Get your, you get your friends. Back to where we were talking. Every ounce counts. Hollow it out. Hollow out the damn tower and knock it over. Amen. Our one ounce gold Krugerrands. Only $59 over spot. Call 855-GAME-END or email endgameinvestor at milesfranklin.com. Also this week being offered are one ounce silver 2023 Britannias, a 50 coin minimum while supplies last, only $3.15 over spot. Once again, call 855-GAME-END or email endgameinvestor at milesfranklin.com and one of our guys will get in touch with you.